actually like look. music, isn't it? Oh, it's quite catchy. Does it all go in your head sometimes, like just lying in bed at night? Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, I, I never sleep at the moment. Just, <laughs> don't, don't know why. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> Off you go. Right, well, oh, look, it's <laughs> one o'clock already. And here are the things that are bugging me today following a deep trawl of the papers. Now, you know the drill. Let me know if you agree. You can email gbviews at gbnews.uk or tweet us at gbnews. Or, even better, you can tweet me directly. I don't mind. Lots of people do, and they certainly have opinions on me. Um, my handle is at that Alex woman. So, always looking forward to hearing from you. Right, time to wind me up and let me go. OK. You can't walk down the high street or the aisles of a supermarket these days without seeing plant-based food alternatives. Right, so the trendy vegan diet relies heavily on the big food industry, churning out what I consider to be highly processed rubbish, leading to the rise of the junk food vegan. 40% of the vegan diet is now ultra-processed. Just as people wised up to how unhealthy many ready meals are, well, along came Veganuary, and big food suddenly get to pretend they're saving the nation's health and the planet. The truth is, actually, they're making mega profits on not having to pay for meat and dairy while chugging out emissions in their factories and feeding people on additive-ridden junk. Right, so some alternative meats actually made from fermenting soil mould grown in vats and then heat treated to remove excess levels of RNA. Delicious. Add to that the fact that a quarter of vegans have iron deficiency and what is supposed to be healthy suddenly looks really quite bad, doesn't it? But hey-ho, it's brilliant for mega, mega multinational companies. <laughs> I thought you were going to say Meghan Markle there. <laughs> it's probably good for her as well. Uh, I'm, I'm sure, sure she loves a bit of veganism. She oh, does. I'm sure. She looks like a vegan. Whatever that means or looks like, though. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> from one lot of food on to another. I wonder who our lawyers are. Because <laughs> I need to ring them. <laughs> that, thank God it's Friday, huh? Oh, and a bit of swearing thrown in as well. Off you go. Go on. Right, the Palmo. Everyone in the North East will surely oh. have heard of the Palmo. It's come under fire lately after Middlesbrough advertised their regional speciality with oh. a banner saying, We are Palmo and Chips. Perfect. Now, a Palmo oh, is Oh, look at that. I love the Palmo. The meat covered in bechamel sauce and cheese. Oh. and deep fried. It finds its origins via a chef with the US Army in World War II. He was wounded in France and brought to the UK to be treated in hospital. He actually moved to Middlesbrough and opened up a grill where he created the very first Palmo in 1958. So, it may have over 2,000 calories, but... But as long as people know that, I think it's great to celebrate regional heritage and long live the Palmo. My word, you've changed your tune. You spend all week <laughs> telling people to watch what they eat, cut down their calories and stop eating. And, and then you're saying the Palmo's all right. Well, it's, it's not, I'm not saying it's, it's 2,000 calories. You shouldn't be eating that That's every day. That's the joy of it. it. Anything that tastes good has calories. <laughs> but it's, I just like a bit of regional, you know, diversity. I like heritage. Oh, it's you've managed to bring story. diversity into the dark conversation. Oh, good. Well, as long as we're being diverse, that's <laughs> Good. Oh, well, we'll tip the diversity thing. Good, good. tip the diversity. North, well done, Alex. Good, northeast east tick. Yeah, good. good. Lovely, nice. off you go. And 2,000 calories tick. I've done that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> a university in Shanghai has managed to make a male rat pregnant by splicing it onto a female rat, transplanting Sorry? a uterus into it and then implanting an embryo before delivering the rat babies by caesarean section. Grim. Not only does this strike me as totally unnecessary and cruel, you would think China would, would have learnt by now not to mess around with animals in labs. They've done what? They've so they spliced the male together. And the yeah, they put them together like this, and then they sort of connected the blood streams, and they put a uterus in the male, and then they put like the embryos inside both the female and the male, and then made the male get pregnant, and then delivered the babies by cesarean. Just why? Well, well there are lots of questions there. Just why? As that's, long as it doesn't go for question. sale in a Chinese supermarket, <laughs> then we're all right. I lived in China and I saw some of the things they sell. Oh yeah, you were you were tell, you were showing us some of your your, China, your Mandarin yesterday. What, did, what was that street you lived on? Uh, it was Ping Tang Lu Zhu Wei. That was the cross section. Marvelous. But, but, I know. You probably I, said something totally completely different. Than... I, I dare I dare not wonder <laughs> what I just said. <laughs> <laughs> Off you go again. I'm sure someone out there is going to tell me. Yeah. <laughs> right, well, perhaps a more animal-loving university <laughs> is Sheffield, where two doctors have published an article stating that animals, too, can experience the impact of hate crimes in a way that undermines their social confidence. They say laws against hate speech protect members of certain human groups, but do not offer protection to non-human animals. Yeah, me neither. What? I know. Like, hate speech against... 
animals. I don't. I don't. I mean, I, I didn't actually bother to read the article in the journal. I must admit. I sort of read the. the so when I the Alsatian starts place. growling at a cockapoo in the street, they're actually saying. No, I think it's like human words. Maybe you know, you should never call your dog by the female name for a dog or something. Who knows what it means? Or maybe if you say your cat's fat, your cat gets hurt. I don't know. But yeah, no. Quite. <laughs> That's a big cost. Right, off you go. Right, so underwear legends, Victoria's Secret, have decided to drop the leg leggy supermodels for a cast of more diverse women. Second diverse tick, please. And people are losing it, really. Well, their new band ambassadors include a pink-haired soccer star and a Chinese freestyle ki skier to combat what they describe as the patriarchal sexist viewing uh, marketed towards younger women. Do you know what? I actually applaud it. Normally, I'm kind of anti this so-called woke culture, but <gasps> the band for too long... You use the W word. We don't use the word. W word. Uh, the band for too long is actually focused on stuff that, frankly, looks utterly frightful to wear, um, comfort-wise, that is, and sets ideals about women focused entirely on what men want. Uh, well, I was, I, I was always under the impression women dressed for other women. I don't think that well. When it comes to under, I don't think that's the case. Maybe for themselves sometimes. But... Well, well, and what's wrong with that? Well, no, I mean, no, there's nothing wrong with it, but that, half the Victoria's Secret stuff, you wouldn't want to sit around for three hours on a high stool behind a desk in that. Wouldn't you? No, I wouldn't have thought so. I've not tried it, but I did... <laughs> I'm not going to either. Move on, really, please. <laughs> Right, let's have a gander at this poor old Matt Hancock. Well, he just can't win at the moment, can he? Here we go. <laughs> well, it's a moment in time that's not moving by the looks of things. A moment locked in Matt Hancock's brain. Uh, they were going to do a little uh, elbow bump there, and Prince Charles said, no, he didn't want to do it. And what is this? The hokey cokey. Um, well, frankly, Did he actually say that? Yeah, he said, he said what is this? The hokey cokey. Excellent. <laughs> Loved it. There's our future king. What a hero. Uh, the elbow bump and the foot shake were novel at the start of the pandemic, but, well, they're now rather cringe, aren't they? And I'm totally with the future king. I just don't want any part of this nonsense anymore. Hang on, which nonsense? This Did... whole, like, and shaking feet and, just, you know, other alternatives to shaking hands. You know, it's funny, because uh, Dr Fauci in America, he said that last year, didn't he, that we probably would never shake hands ever again. Um, but you do want... I mean, people are beginning to do that rather a lot, aren't Do you know what I'm quite enjoying, though? The fact that the sort of whole... We adopted for a while the European must kiss everybody when you say hello to them, which I wasn't well, you, when a fan you were an is that... I mean, was it the kiss on both... Oh, it gets so confusing because it's different numbers in different countries. Oh, yeah, and no. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, right, so... so... I think it's sort of two in France... You think? Then, You've got to know. Oh, it gets, exactly. I think in Spain it's sort of four. One, two, three, four. And sometimes you just don't know what's going on and then you meet in the middle and it's really embarrassing. So which, do we know which country? So in France, it's what? It's, I think it's two in France. Two in France. I think it might be f four I wish in I, I wish I knew who you were trying to remember as you were <laughs> <laughs> I look like a, I'm doing a mad dance. Yeah, no, no. It is like a mad dance. But when you walk around that European Parliament, you just <laughs> all over the place, constantly <laughs> getting kissed. Unless yeah. you're a Bexeteer, that is. <laughs> Let's kiss Alex. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're a Brexit yeah. yeah. But what do they do? They, got, so they don't kiss I you. What do they do? They come up and... I got, few, <laughs> I got a few kisses from, you know, some of the, 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 the Eurosceptics, let's say. You know, they, they're always nice to me. We used to sit in a little rabble-rousing block together and... <laughs> you're crying again. I know. I, don't, I, don't really know, I do. I'm, I'm crying a lot at the moment. I don't know why, but anyway. <laughs> Um, oh, that, that, that's fantastic. Um, but so it, it, I'm, I'm interested in this because how long were you in Brussels? Uh, actually, in the end, it was well, I sat there for like sat in my seat in Parliament for six months. But I actually lived there for two and a half years. I remember watching a wonderful speech that you were giving, and, and Michelle Barnier was sitting down at the front and just looking at you with this sort of bemused, confused, misunderstanding look on his face, and. It, what was, the, what was the atmosphere like in those last days? You know, it was constantly riotous. We had so much fun. We brought a lot of uh, energy into that I'm not sure this is what we want to hear. But it's right. a bit of a staid and boring place to be, to be honest. And it's, like, really sort of focused on, you know, you only get one minute and then the, the, the chair at the front says, no, that's enough speaking time. But we, we brought in the, the art form of shouting across the hemicycle. And yeah, just not it. everybody loved that, but... Um... Oh, I think they did. Yeah, a lot of people no, came no, no. up and said, let me tell you, a lot you. of people we're didn't. We're going to miss you when you're gone. I hope they are missing us. We don't oh, miss you. No, we're very glad you're... Ooh. <laughs> we're very glad you're here, because it's not dull. <laughs> Never a dull moment. Let's move on. <laughs>